Ready? Oh, sorry. Bro. They did that on purpose, I promise. <laughs> I invite you guys to stand. I'm going to pray for us. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you're with us. Lord, we thank you for laughter and friendship and just the everyday uh, gifts you've given us in our lives. Father, I ask that you bless our time together. Holy Spirit, would you come upon the preaching of the word? Lord, would you mark our hearts this morning? In Jesus' name, amen.
Welcome to the House of the Lord. It's a joy to be here with you. My name is Pastor Sean Baker. You may be seated um, as I have a few announcements before we continue with our worship service. Um, one, uh, we have a bunch of different things uh, coming up on the next few weeks here as we're launching different ministries here at Bethany Lutheran Church. Um, so September 6th is a Wednesday at 6.30. We have our confirmation orientation. So if you know someone who's interested in confirmation this upcoming year, I encourage you to come to that. That'll be in room 202 at 6.30 on Wednesday night. And next Sunday, September 10th, uh, which is our do not forget to sign up for Sunday school. So we are going to sign up for Sunday school there, but the theme of it is do not forget. So there will be donuts. So come get donuts and come sign up for Sunday school as well. We look forward to kicking that off um, this year. Also in the next uh, couple of weeks, we have and opportunities to support Lutheran education, uh, specifically supporting our Lutheran high school. There's a few different ways you can do that. Uh, one, on September 10th, uh, we have uh, the annual cornhole tournament. So if you're good at cornhole or if you want to play cornhole, get a few people together, form a team, and support our Lutheran uh, high school in that way. And also, uh, September 18th is the annual Lutheran high golf tournament. So if you like to play golf, if you want to support Lutheran education, get a team together, sign up, and try to get the trophy. Um, and last but not least, uh, as you walked up these uh, sanctuary stairs to get to this place, uh, you may have noticed a bin um, up there on that island, kind of on the, the platform there. And uh, we're already collecting candy uh, for Trunk or Treat um, this upcoming October. Um, as many of you maybe know, if you participated in Trunk or Treat last year, we ran out of candy so quickly. So we're going to start collecting it um, now. So uh, in that bin up there, if you want to bring in candy to donate uh, for the Trunk or Treat, which will be October 29th, um, I encourage you to do so. And you can drop it in that bin. And last but not least, uh, welcome to anyone um, who's here visiting with us. And I encourage you to um, fill out that welcome card that you should have received on your way in. Um, let us know how we can help you connect to this place, but also how we can pray for you and uplift you in your walk with the Lord. Uh, those are all the announcements I have for you this morning. I invite you to rise as we continue our worship service. We begin our service this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess our sins together. Merciful God, we poor, miserable sinners confess that we have failed to love others like you have loved us. Too often we put our needs above others. Too often we respond in anger and hate rather than love. Too often we have thoughts of vengeance rather than forgiveness. Father, forgive us. We pray through your boundless mercy and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to us, poor, sinful people. The good news, Jesus Christ has came to this world for you. And he took on your sins, your mistakes, your imperfections. He took them upon himself and he went to the cross. But three days later, he rose from the grave, setting you free, giving you life, forgiving you. And because of the work of Christ, you now have been given eternal life. All who call on the name of Jesus will be saved. And as an ordained pastor, as a servant of Jesus, it's my privilege this morning to announce a forgiveness unto you all. I now forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you. I invite you now to go share that peace with the people sitting next to you. Welcome them into the house of the Lord.
I invite you now to please go ahead and return to your pew. And you may be seated as we continue God's service with a few readings from his word. The official reading for this Sunday is from Romans, the 12th chapter, beginning at the 9th verse. Let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil but give thought to what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For both side doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The Gospel reading, if you'd rise for the Gospel, please, is in Matthew, the 16th chapter, beginning with the 21st verse. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in the mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his own soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and he will reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Excuse me, God. I just want to bless you.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of you have ever had an experience, and because of that experience, your life is now completely changed? Maybe some of you have always had the dream to go see your favorite musician, your favorite rock band in concert, and your friends and family, they knew that about you, and so they came together, they got you tickets so you could see that band or a musician play live. And at that concert, your life, the way you listen to music, it's completely changed. And now listening to your favorite musician on CD or the old vinyl or, or listening to your favorite musician on Spotify or Pandora, it just isn't the same. Or maybe some of you have always had that dream or desire to go to that specific restaurant to try that specific kind of food. And at that restaurant, the way you eat, the way you taste food, it's completely changed. And maybe as you leave that restaurant, you go home and you try to replicate the recipe. You try to use all the same ingredients, but it just isn't the same. Or maybe some of you remember the first time that you ever wore eyeglasses. You went to the eye doctor, and the eye doctor gave you the, the test where you had to look at the eye chart on the wall, and he said, try to read the lowest letter. And, and he could see that you were struggling, and so he said, you're going to need some glasses. And, and you put on glasses for the first time, and, and suddenly the way that you see, it's completely changed. Now you don't have to squint to read the pages on your favorite book, or now as you're driving at night, you don't have to hope and pray and guess if your car is within the white lines on the road. Now you can see, and now you, you can't imagine your life without that vision. Your life is completely changed. Now maybe some of us this morning think that these situations are minor or unimportant, but as people of God, as children of God, our lives, they are completely changed. 
God in his mercy and grace for you, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to this world. And Jesus Christ came and, and took your sins upon himself, died on a cross and rose to give you life, giving you mercy and grace from God. And the love and mercy and grace that Jesus Christ has given you has completely changed your life. You once were an enemy of God, but, but now you're made a child of God. You, you once were distant from God, but now you've been brought near because of the love that Jesus Christ has won for you. And this love that we've received because of the work of Jesus, we're encouraged to share with other people with our words, with our actions. This love that we have freely have received from Jesus, we're called to freely give it to other people in our lives, other people in our communities. Well, love in our world is something that's talked about quite a lot. But the way that the world speaks about love is much different from the way that God's Word talks about love. In our text today from Romans chapter 12, the reading that Roger read, it gives us some insight on what this love of God that we've received from Jesus, what it looks like, this love of God that we're called to share, what it looks like and how that differs from love as it's talked about in the world. The first major difference in Romans chapter 12, there's an assumption of community. There's an assumption of other people. The love described in Romans 12, it's something that is focused on the other person. It's something that is externally focused. Paul, he starts out Romans 12 and he says, love one another with brotherly affection. He goes on to say, outdo one another in showing honor. Paul, he continues and he says, contribute to the needs of the saints, meaning continue to care for those within the body of Christ. Paul, he continues and he says, continue to seek to show hospitality to other people. And Paul in Romans 12, he continues and he says, rejoice with those who rejoice, but also weep with those who weep. The love described in Romans 12, it, it's something that is focused solely on the other person. It's a love that is there to care for people's needs. It's a love that means we walk alongside other people in joys and in difficult times. It's a love focused on the other person. And imagine with me this morning what our world would look like, or, or better yet, what our church would look like if we mirrored this kind of love. What would our church look like if we strove to outdo one another in doing good, or outdo one another in, in showing honor? What would our church look like if we were solely focused on the needs of the other person rather than ourselves? In Romans 12, it describes a completely different kind of love, a love that isn't talked about in the world. In the world, there's this push to put the individual above the community, the individual above everyone else. And that's thinking isn't just out in the world, but it's you and me today. There are times in our lives when we put ourselves above other people or put ourselves above what God's Word says and how God's Word desires for us to live. There are times in our lives when we pursue our own desires, pursue our own wants, ignoring the needs of other people around us. There are times when we talk about love or when we think about love. We focus on loving ourselves rather than loving other people that God has placed in our lives. When we meet someone for the first time, we, we tend to make snap judgments or we tend to label them in our minds. We either say, well, this is someone that I could really relate well to. This is someone who could maybe be in my circle. Or, or we maybe say, well, this is someone who, who I don't see myself getting along with. This is someone who I don't relate well to. And, and we make snap judgments or we label people in our minds 
based on a whole host of different things. Maybe it's the way that they dress, or maybe it's the vocabulary that they use as they're speaking to us, or, or, or maybe it's the experiences that they choose to share with us. And we quickly determine, this is someone that I can relate to, or, or this is someone I can't. And in our culture and in our lives, we're much more likely to share or give to someone who we can relate to rather than someone who is outside of our circle. We tend to be protective of the resources, of the gifts that we have. And there are times in our lives, in our world, where we treat love like that. We treat love like a limited commodity where we pick and choose who we give love to. But before we give love to someone, we might say something like, well, what, what if I love this person and they don't love me back? Or, or what if I love and invest in this person and I never see them again? Or, or they never return that kind of love to me? Or maybe we say or think, what if I love this person and they take advantage of me? There are times in our lives when we treat love like a limited commodity. We treat love as something that's conditional. But in Romans 12, the way that Paul and God's Word describes love, it's completely different. It's not a conditional love. It's not a love meant for just people we relate to. But it's, it's a love meant for all people. It's an unconditional kind of love. Paul in Romans 12, he says... Bless those who curse you. He, he goes on to say, if your enemy is hungry, give him something to eat. If your enemy is thirsty, give him something to drink. In Romans 12, God's word he describes love as something that's unconditional, meant for all people. Not just people we get along with or relate to. And not just people in our circle. And the good news for you and me today, that's the kind of love that Christ has for you. Christ came to this world when you were an enemy of God. He came to this world taking all of your sins upon himself to give you God's forgiveness, to give you God's life, to welcome you into God's family and kingdom, which has no end. Jesus Christ, out of his great love and mercy for you, he took on the vengeance or the anger of God that you deserved to give you love. Christ overcame your evil, and he overcame it with love. Christ has unconditional love for us, and that's the kind of love that we're called to share in Romans chapter 12. And lastly, in Romans 12, Paul, he starts out our text by saying, let your love be genuine. When we tend to greet people, maybe you've had conversations like this. Maybe you see someone on a sidewalk, or, or maybe you see them here at church, and you see them from a distance, and you say to them, hey, how are you doing? And they reply instantly by saying, good, great, good or great. That's this response that's almost expected. It, it's like the conversation is automatic. But how many times as we greet someone from a distance do we listen for anything other than good or great? I would venture to say that if someone answered the question, hey, how are you doing? With anything other than good or great, I think a lot of us would be caught off guard. We, we wouldn't know what to say. We, we wouldn't know what to respond to. Paul in our text, he says, let your love be genuine. I think there are a lot of times in our lives when we're polite to other people. We ask, hey, how are you doing? But we don't listen with actual concern. We, we tend to love people from a distance. Or, or, or maybe there are people within our lives, in our communities, that they speak against God's word or they say something that God's word doesn't agree with. And instead of speaking up and correcting them in kindness and gentleness, we choose not to say anything. We tend to love other people from a distance. Or, or maybe there's that person in your life, they're really struggling, they're going through something difficult. 
And in their difficulty, a lot of times we might say something like, well, I'm praying for you. And instead of pulling them to the side and saying, can I pray with you right now? We tend to love people from a distance. But in Romans chapter 12, Paul, he doesn't say, let your love be distant. He says, let your love be genuine. A genuine kind of love is the kind of love that's ready, willing, and able to care for those or help people in difficult times and in joyful times. A, a genuine love is there, ready to con correct with gentleness and kindness when someone doesn't know what God's word says. A genuine kind of love is ready to walk alongside other people in times of joy and in times of difficulty. The love that Jesus Christ has given you is something that's truly life-changing. It's a love based in his mercy and grace for you. And in Romans chapter 12, it describes a genuine, a, a love focused on other people, a love that's unconditional and for all people, and that's the kind of love that Christ has for you. In Romans chapter 12, it highlights and gives us insight of what love looks like, the love that we're called to share. And this love that we're called to share is the kind of love that Christ has for you. Now may the grace of God, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. At this time, we have the opportunity to confess our Christian faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to please rise. We confess with one voice, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ. Amen. We now continue our service by having the opportunity to give our burdens, our worries, our concerns, going to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Please pray with me. Gracious Lord, we're thankful for an opportunity to come into your house and worship you. Lord, we thank you for the great love that you've given us through your Son, Jesus, through his work on the cross. And Father, one of the ways that you've given us your love and life in this world is through the gift of baptism. And today, we rejoice and celebrate with those who are remembering the day when you claim them as your own at the font. And today, we especially lift up Richard, Paula, Doug, Christopher, Lucas, Bridget, Karen, Sawyer, Stella, Dave, Claire, Kendall, Madison, we also pray for Isabel, who is getting baptized later today. Father, continue to lead and guide them by your Spirit, that they may continue to live as children of you in this world. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the many ministry partnerships that we have here at Bethany Lutheran Church, school and preschool. And Father, we thank you for our partnership with the Manual Community Outreach Association. Father, we thank you for the work that they do, being your hands and feet in their community, showing the love of Christ to all. Father, continue to bless them in their work, in their ministry. And Father, we pray that the fruits of their labor are not in vain, that others may come to know the love that Christ has for them through their work and through their outreach. Heavenly Father, we have many people today on our hearts and in our minds in need of your healing. And today we especially lift up Argus, Barbara, Diana, and Shelley. Father, continue to be with them and work through the doctors and nurses that are working with them. Lord, we ask that you continue to give them your peace in this difficult time and give their families peace as well. And Father, we ask that if it is your will, 
they may receive healing that comes from you. Gracious Lord, God of all life, we give thanks today for those couples who are expecting a new son or daughter soon. We ask that you continue to be with Hoyt and Kylie, Keith and Courtney, Brett and Brianna. Father, continue to watch over the expectant mothers and babies throughout their pregnancies. And Lord, we ask that they may continue to have good health. And Father, as these children are brought into this world, we ask that they may be brought to the font where they will be claimed by you and welcomed into your family, which has no end. And God of all comfort and God of all grace, we ask that you continue to be with the friends and family of Mary Ann. Father, continue to give them your peace and comfort in this difficult time. Be with the family and friends of Mary Ann and allow them to continue to cling to the promises of life that you have for them. Life through your son Jesus, a promise of life that is even greater than death. Father, continue to give them peace and comfort in this difficult time. And Heavenly Father, we ask all this in your son's holy and precious name. And we now pray the prayer together that your son, our Savior, has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallowed upon your hands and feet will mark you for eternity. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread. And after he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Let's do in remembrance of me. 
In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and after he gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Just do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Bethany, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. You may be seated. I'll now um, distribute communion to those helping with the distribution, and then we'll commune you all.
Please rise. And now that you receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of all your sins, may it strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul until life everlasting. Depart in our Savior's peace. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, we thank you for this meal that you've given us of your body and blood. Father, as we depart this place, lead us to be your children in this world, to share the love that you've given us freely. Father, let us leave this place as fed and nourished children of you, that we may open our mouths and share your love freely, that all people may come to know the saving knowledge of you and Jesus Christ for them. Father, we ask this in your Son's holy and precious name. Amen. Hear the blessing of the Lord to you from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto all of you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. week.